In today's video, we're going to discuss how to connect an anchor to a boat. Most boats use a connection made of rope and chain, although smaller boats may use only rope. This connection is called the anchor road, and it must be long enough so that when the anchor is deployed, the force pulls the anchor horizontally, allowing it to establish the best grip on the ground. Well, coming back in a sailing and bib workshop is an amazing workshop. It's a little bit not an odd. Now, I call you here for talk about the swivel. This swivel is not only one normal swivel, it's one system very fancy that personally I don't need it. I have to say I don't like it for other problematic also more uh, connected to my kind of uh, boat and my style of sailing. This kind of swivel, what he do is important. He do it uh, when uh, the, the anchor imagine is in the opposite position, attach here, arrive on the bowsprit uh, wheel, is the, the pulley on the end of your bowsprit, when they arrive there, automatically redispose the anchor in the correct position for go up. The thing I don't like is eh, that when you anchor the boat, when I drag the ground, this swivel put one force of uh, holding that is not in perfect balance and I don't really like We use it to anchor with the old secure, that means secure. And uh, the most of the normal uh, modern sailor, they don't use it anymore, anchor sold, but we really know how can use it and we really relabel in the CQR. There is a plenty other anchor. I know your comment got to be, oh, the rock is the only one. Uh, so sorry, guys. Uh, depend if you know how can use one anchor or not. And when you feel in comfort with one anchor, you know the limits they have, but the quality they have, you can give the maximum safe with that anchor. And the uh, reason why we got to remove this swivel and we go to use it only one shackle for one period. That can happen, make me in one situation where in the end the anchor coming up in the opposite position. But I already do it for many years and I don't have a problem to drop him down again the anchor of one meter and a half, force the chain to twist and re-pull him back again. Uh, we go to connect the galvanized chain to the anchor with a couple of shackles and no swivel. This swivel is going to be uh, service and good for sale. Uh, if anyone is interested, let me know, we can send to you by post. When you want to use it, one shackle for joint your anchor and uh, or for joint two piece of chain, you have to really find one uh, shackle, have to have one dimension, don't go to disturb the, the, the gypsy. The gypsy is the barbotane, is the wheel pulling up the chain. If the shackle is too big, risk to damage the barbotine or come out from the barbotine when it's an high load, risk to release all the tension of the chain. This diameter is a 10 mm. When you use it one shackle, the shackle have to have, have to be composed of one body with one diameter of 10 mm. It's very important the pin, that is the, also the parts on the shackle, more fragile because working perpendicular. If you can have one small shackle, but more big section, diameter, is better. And now we go to install the chain and the anchor. You see, this one pass, and again, you see the proportion is covered. Ah, you see how can it happen? This is something you have to calculate because if you do this, uh, is one problem. If you do it one time, you can do it the whole time. This is the problem. But in normally, this situation, and this is also better, because it's more big, the shaft. Okay. 
definitely. I take my decision. Because this one gives me more uh, safety. He always can come out, you see? It's always better. It, it can't stuck like the other one. It's the best. Pasta. Pasta. You see? One thread is out. And we are on the end of the thread. It's the perfection. If I go over, I go to break the thread. This is a spectra. When choosing the rope to connect the chain to the boat, it's always best to use a mooring line as it has better stretchability. For added safety, we also have an extra 20 meters of rope attached to the chain, which allows us to anchor in stronger winds or deeper water if necessary. Here you can see the splice where we joined the, the 20 meter rope to the 110 meter chain. Stay tuned, next week there is also the dedicated video about the splice. This is one rope with the eight string. It's not a normal three string rope, but this one a uh, nice uh, mooring line. This is the beginning. That is the end. In reality, the 106 meter chain is not very durable system to, to show the meter, but it's one good system for the first period. After in the future we go to repainting when the painting come out or use it the plastic uh, uh, mark. Uh, 10 meter, one black, 20 meter, two black and one yellow, 30 meter, you have uh, two, two black and one red, 40 meter, four black and three yellow. Moment, 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 and the last one we have four red, four turquoise, four yellow, four black. And when this is the hundred okay? To keep track of how much chain we've released, we marked it at regular intervals. This helps prevent us from releasing more chain than necessary, such as when we're in very deep water or experiencing strong winds. There are various ways to do this, but in our case we use spray paint to mark every 10 meters. We go back uh, on board guys, that is the beginning of the preparation, we'll sailing again. Racing boat, don't have a cleat, maybe in the future we have to think about, but if you see plenty of rope attached everywhere we can, because we attach the most structural point we have, like the chain plate of the stay sail, the one you can see in the previous video two years ago when I built the stay sail chain plate and uh, the stay in the red. Now, the line of the anchor has to be free from everything. When you go underwater, below this one, below again this one, and uh, from the bowsprit anchor, we go straight on the rail, here, inside to the chain lock before I go to rebuild the windlass. Now I go to bring from down. Here is the chain locker where come the rope. The rope, it can come out from here. 
but I dispose one bronze through all on the wall like this I can bring here now here is a, the knots can block on the wall for do these knots I do like this This one uh, stop knots. This one knots help uh, me to be sure the line. Don't come out on the hole. This one is very safe, but is also nice. There's a few months uh, we don't use it. This is uh, a very industry high quality switch. I really we broke in the switch and the, in the relay. But it's a, it's a good system. All boats need a minimum length of rope attached to the chain to ensure that when the road is fully extended, the entire chain has passed through the gypsy of the windlass and the rope runs through it instead. This is important because if the chain is inside the gypsy after the road is fully extended and the rope is in tension, continuing to operate the windlass could cause the motor to become powerful enough to break any rope connecting the chain to the boat, even Dyneema. If this happens, you risk losing all your chain and anchor. This is a common mistake as many boaters fear that if the rope is too long, the chain might fully exit the gypsy and they won't be able to retrieve it. Hence, they keep the rope short to ensure the chain doesn't completely exit the gypsy. A solution instead is to use a rope designed for the windlass to grip or to use the engine to motor forwards when retrieving the anchor. This is the one uh, good winch, a small one maybe, for one uh, 20 meter boat, but very nice. Is a Maxwell. I dream of an electric windlass with the winch on the top to the gypsy. This is a gypsy. It's the one, the disc can hold the load of the chain and can pull. The clutch system is made, if you ever see when I tie it, eh, we can go back with the video. There is a, the clutch is made from one con bronze clutch. So when you tie it, block. When you go back, you slack. Now we have to change the bearing, but this is another story. The nice thing to the Maxwell is that the rope, why are you putting back that rope? Because that rope hold in that gypsy. Now we have to arrive up to when the chain reach the gypsy. And like this, the chain is hold by the gypsy. Okay, that is something we know can happen. At the moment the splice is new, so you go to have a difficulty to pass. When it start to tow and start to squeeze a little bit, it's going to be more easy. And now, lucky Timo is strong enough to do like this. And... And this is the 100 meter mark, ready here, the poor color, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, yellow, black, yellow, black. We go to see when we arrive here, and we know we are on the end of our chain. Ninety meter. I go to redispose the chain inside. It's the first time. It's the most important.
The proportion of chain and anchor should be appropriate for the boat's weight. The heavier the boat, the heavier the chain and anchor need to be. The length of the road is determined by the depth of the water in which you plan to anchor, which we'll discuss in more detail in a future video. All anchors work based on their shape, not their weight. If you'd like to support us on Patreon or with a one-off donation, I'll put the links in the description. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment, share it with your friends, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. You see what I do it? The job to make it straight, also because we have the tie down of the bow split. Done. Here from Borneo is Island of Saba. All is done. New chain, new anchor. Ten year old. In MV we always have one shovel on board because if we ever dig one pit for buried our treasure, we are ready. 22 years ago I, I buried one treasure in one secret island on the Caribbean. It's true, there is the picture.